one problem you have when you're using a motorized telescope is that you have battery anxiety. So what you really need is a power tank. So if you follow some of my other videos, uh, you may know that I recently purchased a Celestron 6SE motorized telescope and I've been getting a lot of use out of it. Um, bought some new lenses or eyepieces um, and really enjoying kind of learning more about astronomy and looking at the night sky when it's not super cloudy. And one of the issues, uh, if you look online, it's quite a common thing. It uses quite a lot of batteries uh, in these telescopes and depending on obviously how long you're spending each night you know, looking at the stars, if, if you're tracking things and, and using the motors a lot, um, a couple of things are happening. Um, one is you can kind of notice the slugginess of that motorized movement as the batteries degrade. Um, but also the, you can burn through the batteries pretty quickly. Now, my set of batteries have lasted me quite a few nights really of you know, a good kind of three or so hours usage. Um, and that's actually more than I thought based on some of the stuff I read online. But one of the things that I've been finding myself doing a lot lately is I've been trying out different eyepieces and then just trying to get better views of certain stars and certain clusters is I'm constantly thinking, oh, I don't know how long this is going to take me. I want to go get my camera. Perhaps I should turn it off. So I turn it off and I turn it back on again. And that's fine if I'm just looking at a static object. Well, I guess an easier to spot object like the moon or whatever. But if I'm looking to follow um, you know, harder to see objects, then I've totally screwed up my whole alignment. Uh, I'll talk about that in another video because I'm still struggling a little bit. Um, I'm working on how to get the, the alignment working really well with a telescope. Um, but yeah, so I decided to pick up one of these power tanks. Now, I think actually they're pretty expensive. Um, so I put a, a link in the description. It's about £120, um, which I think is a lot of money um, in a way for a battery. Um, but it's um, a 2000 milliamp hour battery. So 84.4 uh, watt hours. Um, but I think you're also paying a little bit for, for peace of mind. So you can get batteries a lot cheaper than this. Um, and the reason why I decided to get this is just to be perfect, actually, just less messing around and knowing that you've got some backing if there is a problem with the product and knowing it's gonna come with the right adapters and everything to have to plug in and, and power some of the additional kit. And um, cause I've also got one of those Wi-Fi. Uh, finder adapters which I need to check out as well and should hopefully can power that from this as well so we shall see but I thought I'd unbox it and show it to you guys and show you what you're getting for your money um, so as I mentioned 2000 milliamp hour uh, battery um, it also has uh, an inbuilt uh, red light to help you obviously when you're trying to fumble around trying to find the right lenses or whatever I do have a separate um, red light torch for that but this is a lot better. Also, it's using the Lifey batteries, which are a lot safer than some of the other batteries, like lithium uh, batteries that, you know, I think some of the cheaper ones are. So I'm not super worried about that because with the quadcopters and stuff that I use, I'm very comfortable with the different handling of the batteries and everything. Um, but it does have two USB ports. Um, so depending on what you're looking to do in the future, um, so I'm thinking about, I might run a Raspberry Pi connected to this as well, so I could power the Raspberry Pi connected to the telescope and everything as well, because I'm interested in getting some, um, you know, the, the small, essentially webcams that you can connect uh, to the eyepiece and, and check things out. So that's, that's kind of why I went with this, um, but it's got the strap um, so that you can connect, connect it on um, to the tripod and everything. So. I have to say, I haven't tried this out yet. This is the first unboxing and we'll see how happy or not I am uh, after using it for a little while. Um, so first of all, let's just pop this over here a little bit. It's a nice little black box in here. And in here we have 
so I guess a small carry strap. The, the power adapter that will fit into the power pack and your Celestron telescope. Uh, a multitude of different connectors. So I can see in here we've got obviously the UK three pin, European two pin, uh, US two pin, but look at it, and some other one which I'm not quite familiar with, but should cover you around uh, around the world there, depending where you're based. Here is a power adapter, obviously for charging it, and this is that Velcro mount so that you can connect it on to the tripod leg. Fantastic. Um, so as it says on the box, it says it should give 10 hours use. Um, I'll probably mention it in some of the follow-up videos, actually how many hours I'm getting. I, I guess that's a conservative one. It's gonna depend you know, how much you're using the motor or not as to how long the battery lasts, but it's got a good, a good weight to it. I don't know exactly how much it weighs and if it says it on there. One kilogram. Hmm. It's a little bit heavier than that, but whatever. Um, so if we pop this out, have a look at it. So this is it. This is the Celestron power tank. Um, so there's a couple of other versions of this. There's a couple of others that are not using uh, you know, lithium battery packs and they are kind of quite massive chunky things, look like a big torch. Um, and then they've recently released a Celestron Power Tank Pro, um, which has a lot more capacity than this has. Um, but I think for you, uh, the kind of uses I'm going to put in it are hobbyist. This should be more than enough. So I really like it. It feels quite well built and, and ruggedized, which is good. Um, nice soft uh, padding on the inside there, so it's not going to be scratching the leg uh, of your tripod uh, when you kind of plug that all in. It feels like it's. I don't know if it's waterproof, but it definitely feels like it might be water resistant. Um, does it say on here about waterproofing? Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, IP65 rating. So it has some weatherproofing, dustproofing. At the top here is what looks to be the cap that you well then, gently pull off and open up to give access to um, the power. So, let's see if we can see this here. So I just press the power button on. You see it's obviously coming somewhat pre-charged, all four of those blue LEDs um, are lighting up. It's actually going through some test kind of cycle, I think. The, the lights are just kind of scrolling through. Um, okay, so that's, if you press once, it's for status, yeah. And then if you press and hold, then it's powering, I think. Um, then we have the red and white light. So I'll just demonstrate that. That's the red light. And it's two stages of brightness, so that's stage one, stage two. Obviously the red light, if you don't know, is really good for nighttime use, doesn't kind of screw up your night vision. If you press and hold it, it will turn on the white light. Again, standard uh, brightness, increase brightness, and then down again. You have to press and hold to turn it off. So you can't accidentally um, turn on the white light. You, you have to uh, instinctively go to turn it on. Um, obviously then, again, we've got the two USB plugs. One um, supplying five volts at 2.1 amps, and one supplying five volts at one amp. Uh, the one thing that isn't obvious to me is actually where you plug it into charge, which I have to look at the manual, aren't I? Yeah, but no, I mean, that seems nice and rugged, actually. I mean, pressed with a build quality, but 
you should be for the money I guess. Um, so also comes this little instruction manual. Um, so okay, it all seems pretty intuitive. I've not used one of these before, but it seems quite obvious um, where you use everything. Um, oh, it's under here. So this little rubber or slot is where you um, go to plug and charge it in. So that's it. Um, so like I said, I will use this and see kind of how I find it. Uh, and I'll probably add a little section at the end of this video, just kind of closing thoughts on how well it works or doesn't work. Um, so you can make you know informed decision. But I'm hoping that this makes you know my astronomy viewing more enjoyable. I'm less worried about turning things on and off all the time. And I don't know if it will unbalance things. Um, I might think of actually where I put this on one of the three legs, depending on the, obviously the size of the eyepiece, putting this on the opposite side may help uh, balance things and kind of keep it firm in the ground. But yeah, this looks, um, it looks good. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, uh, when I was turning it on and it was cycling through those lights, it says, press the power button once and the battery indicator lights will light up, showing the amount of power left in the battery. All four lights, the battery is full. Three lights, 75%, two lights, 50%, and one light is 25%. Um, so it's all fairly obvious. Um, yeah. Oh, and it comes with a two year limited warranty as well. So I thought it was only one year, but um, I don't know if that's a, a European only thing. So I know most things in Europe has to come with a two year warranty. Perhaps it's only one year in the US, I don't know. But that's it, the Celestron Power Tank Lithium. It's pricey, um, but it does seem well built and well equipped. And uh, we'll come back in a moment with how well I found it um, after using it. There for a few sessions. Okay, so I just realized I hadn't finished talking uh, about my experience so far with the power tank. So it's been about four, four constant nights of using it and uh, around three hours ish each one. Uh, I'm obviously not putting it under loads of pressure because I'm not using uh, the motors of the telescope all the time, but it's still got all four lights on. Um, so it's, it's working really well basically, and that's with the Kind of the red light on all the time it's constantly plugged in to the telescope uh, and and having it powered obviously it's not doing act any active track or anything so that's probably why um it's not using the, the battery up too much but i'm fine with that um when actually using the motors in the telescope it does seem to perform a, a more smoother uh, and more effortless um movement of the telescope mechanism so that's really good um so yeah i'm really happy with it it gives off a really good light to, to kind of identify your eyepiece and everything as well. Um, it fits onto the leg of the telescope um, tripod really well and actually because it's got a reasonable weight to it, it actually kind of helps a little bit with stability so yeah I'm really impressed um, it definitely makes me feel more confident with just having the telescope on all the time and it means I'm going to spend a bit more time um, trying to improve uh, how I can use a star align system because uh, really that's uh, obviously a big selling point of this telescope that I haven't really spent too much time with yet but yes I am happy uh, they're not cheap but I think it's worth the money um, and so I'd recommend it to anyone that's using a powered tripod um, and wants to have the ability to just kind of power it up and not have to worry about it for for the evening or multiple evenings depending on how much uh, power you're intending to use. Thanks for watching this video, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.